Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming for the session uh, of afternoon session. So meaning that I will try to be informative in, uh, and uh, entertaining. Because there was a lunch and people enjoyed the lunch. And uh, while you were digesting this awesome food, you will be digesting some awesome information. Um, my name is Victor Gamov. I work as a developer advocate here at Confluent. And uh, this is what I do. I go to places, talk to people. Um, I would like to he, like a, mm, I would like to be like observer of your pain, so you can come to me and talk to. Hey, we have these problems with like this stuff Kafka thing or Kafka streams thing, and I will try to either suggest something, or um, suggest some technical solution, or maybe just you know give you a hug. Right? Sometimes just a hug is, is all the, all you need. Um, as a developer of the kit, like to like jokes aside, um, I talk to engineers, I talk to developers, I talk to architects. Um, let's do it once again. So we have uh, uh, developers, developers, developers. Okay, so I, the, you don't afraid see some code, right? You don't afraid some see some Java code, some ugly Java code. Who afraid this? Okay, good. Um, maybe some Kotlin. Any Scala developers here? You won't see Scala today. No, no, no Scala. So, for those of you who have Twitter, you have to tweet because I have a something, uh, something interesting for you. But this is disclaimer. I build Hello World apps. They're highly scalable, highly available, full tolerant and stuff, but they still Hello World apps. I kind of know things. Um, and uh, thanks for uh, fellow developer the kid from the uh, Spring, um, Kenny. We built this stuff. This is what developer advocates do. Also have a raffle. Um, if you will be tweeting pictures from this session and uh, tag me and the tag Kafka Summit, I will find you and send you a DM. But this is important. Like all these things needs to be on your Twitter so you will join the raffle. And after that, I will pick and choose the winner. All right. Another maybe second important slide from the slide where uh, we're explaining the important things of, uh, in Twitter. This is the code. This is what we will be seeing. For your, again, convenience, you can use URL. If you know how to use this, uh, the squares, I, know, I don't know, like maybe it's uh, useful to anyone. Um, the two apps, we're going to be talking two apps, one app. Um, I kind of show, sort of showed in the morning. Uh, how many of you have been at the morning session about Kubernetes, microservices? Few people, okay, it's good. So in this case, I can, um, I can go all the way. Now, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about microservices, services, uh, uh, modules, application, uh, uh, the way how these applications integrate, right? Um, everything starts with small something, uh, small, small class, small module, small jar, small app. And uh, it's good, right? It's easy. You develop it yourself. You, uh, as a developer, you are uh, your product manager, you're writing your requirement, your data architect, you design your database, you yourself a like UI developer. Um, so you develop this app. And this is good. This is easy, right? So over the time, you start building different apps because uh, this is what we do, developers. We build apps to, uh, to serve business, right? So um, unless you're not getting paid um, to develop stuff, to make money, I don't know like how you make your money. So you build more apps. So you build more modules, more jars, more apps. Now you start dealing with the different. Um, th uh, th your app is growing because you're putting more, uh, more things here, like more classes, more jars, and uh, very soon your application starts looking like like jungle, right? And uh, it's still okay. It's a lot of, it's, it's a beautiful jungle. You, you're growing this. It's grow over the time. A lot of things happen in this application. Lots of memories. But over the time, this place becoming very dark place. And uh, it doesn't fit in your head, like in your only head anymore, because there's a lot of things going on, some shady stuff going on. Maybe someone tried to hide some of the skeletons here. So. This is uh, your, your architect trying to explain this application, this enterprise architecture for other people. So essentially, refactoring is coming. Refactoring 
to microservices is coming. You need to break down this monolith thing, right? All right. It used to be simple, right? So it used to be simple because everything is one place and all these classes, all this code, and you don't need to worry about all these integrations. It's, it used to be very simple. Databases, enterprise Java beans. Anyone? Um, Three-tier applications, the Java E blueprint. Thank you, Sun Microsystems. Um, we know that the application needs to have a business logic, some, some storage database, and your um, presentation uh, layer. Now, it's not so simple anymore. It is not. Uh, things that we consider as a normal applications, monolith applications, things that we know how to build, we, we get good at it, right? We build these applications over the time. And, um, but here's some problems. Again, remember this architect. This is something that, that usually sits in your brain and you, when you're trying to explain someone like the architecture of, of your application. It's hard to talk about because you don't know things and it's difficult you to um, say, yeah, I don't know how these bits of this application work because I don't remember or I was not there. I don't know. It's difficult to change. It's difficult to change because you don't know what to change. You don't know how these cascading failures will affect your, um, your, your, your other component. So again, refactoring is, is, is going. So you're breaking things down. The small, small bits, microservices, new things. So let's, let's do this. We start doing this because you, we, we're, we're, not, we're, not, we're, not, uh, we're not the stupid people, right? So we know how to modularize our application. Our runtime supports us. Java has jars. Now we have a Java. Uh, how many of you guys using Java modules? Nice. Love it. Love it. Uh, Java 8, anyone? Java 9. Java 11. Nice. Whew. All right. So um, now you have this uh, the application. You're trying to break it down. But here's the thing. When everything is local, everything is easy. But uh, it's not easy to control. So now you, you already broke this down. How you can reintegrate it back. How you get establish the communication between microservices. There are no good ways to integrate. Oh, I'm sorry. There are no good ways to integrate microservices. So let me um, break this down for you. So one of the, my probably first things that I want to talk about is how you can integrate microservices through file systems. Is it a good idea? How do you think? It's, it's, it's also simple. It's kind of sort of you have a microservices. You have it, right? But you're, you're not taking this very far from each other. So I still don't think it's a good idea because you don't uh, have all these benefits of microservices. You still need to collocate it somehow so you can communicate through, I don't know, FTP. Do we have any like banking people here? FTP and the pipe separated uh, uh, files. I have some, some, some enterprise data in my demo. We'll see. So next thing you see, okay, I don't want to use a file system because I don't have all these um, guarantees for my app, so I want to have a consistency. I want to have uh, atomacy, transaction isolation, durability, all this kind of nice stuff. Um, and you're trying to do integration of your microservices through database, right? This sounds good because you know database. Database is something that we use because remember, in this simple life, you still use database. You know, you cannot throw away this uh, five, six years in, the, in in college or university when you're learning this uh, um, relational math, right? How you can transform relational data models into object models? How you wh where do you throw away all this like experience of turning um, one thing a relational to object model, right? Hibernate, all these things. Um, consistency is good. Consistency is good uh, with, uh, with this data, but uh, it's becoming evident that these microservices that need to share the data, they become like they start communicate to each other, and uh, very soon they're breaking their like bounded context. They, one of the data models from one place trying to leak into another data model, right? They're starting 
kind of depend on each other on the data model. So changes in your application or changes in the application someone else was doing will be also leaked into your application. Um, still, its database is good. Don't get me wrong. I'm not the, the I'm not I'm not uh, arguing about database. You need to store a state somewhere. However, it is terrible to have database cross boundary to have database for integration. All right. So, the the change you still can have a change, but not to share your data. So, remote procedure calls. Um, remote procedure calls. It's kind of sort of the same thing as you did with local calls, but remote calls. Um, now you need to think about serialization, uh, digitalization, uh, handling of errors, all this stuff that you kind of get um, from your runtime, like exception handling. This is part of your language. Or serialization. You never think about serialization. You don't need to t uh, turn object uh, into something to send it over the wire because it's, it's uh, close here. Still. Maybe a little bit better than database. Still better, because in this case, you can uh, surround your data model, your application, with API, right? So this API that you, you define this contract. Feels natural since you already develop this stuff in your local applications, right? You, you're calling other services, and uh, all good. Uh, request response, you're getting the something. Uh, I want this one, you get the response, all good. How you will deal with cascading failures with the um, remote procedure call situation? It's a question, right? How you deal with this? Any ideas? You need to work with me here. You need more energy because you just had a lunch. I know it's, it's a struggle. You will you'll try to go to sleep. I'm trying to be loud and uh, nauseous. So help me out. So how you would do that? So how you debug your distributed system? Traces. Anything else? Who said that? <laughs> System out print line. Also log, right? Log. You can you can you can you can see where your stuff is going on. So it's uh, your log, right? It's your log like this, right? You look in here and see like where is the uh, where's the problem? Is it log for J or it's uh, it's a left for J? How many of you are, like use any log frameworks in Java? Nice. Uh, any other language? Non-Java. This is actually essential thing that I'm going to be talking about. This you building log, you logging, even using system out print uh, Many Russian developers will tell you that system out print is has terrible performance. So do not use system out print for logging. Use correct uh, login frameworks. But by the way, yeah, this is the error as over there. Um, this, is, this is how we define, how, this is how we debug the system. This is the, the failure of the system, right? You build the log. Um, and the log in this particular case um, is something that uh, will capture events. So you might see, okay, so if Victor put this in the very end, he already trashed all this uh, file system, database, RPCs, probably events will be good, right? So this is something good, like a serial lining. We're getting this, uh, some, some awesome stuff. Uh, so what's the event, right? I, uh, I, I don't really understand this description, but I really like this. It sounds uh, very um, good for enterprise architects to, um, to say this and to use this. So the events, it's a narrative describing evolution of business over the time. Now, when I say in these words, you, I sound more convincing, more like a CTO level, uh, the person. But uh, essentially, uh, two things. Yeah, it's a notification. You just you know send this message that something has happened. And another one is a uh, 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 state transfer. So as a part of notification, you can also include some of the information that will describe what happened, like sales. sales uh, Operation happen, or like we we, we get the um, uh, some some order, some information apart from notification that we got this order. We also have information about order ID, customer ID, address, where to ship it, how much it will cost. So two things available in events. And events, um, it's also pretty pretty natural for the people, for for human beings, right? Um, situations where you have a immutability in the things that happen, in the facts in your life that happen. 
So for example, you have a conversation with your um, significant other, and you say something that you're not supposed to be saying, and you cannot change that because this fact was immutable, right? It's already recorded in the log, and it is processed on the other side of things. So only thing that you can do is to send another event and wait until it will be properly processed so you get the appropriate response. So it's a very natural with dealing with events. We're not, we're, not, uh, we're, not, uh, we're not changing past. We're not changing past, right? We can only relive in our memories all these things, beautiful things, right? Um, so it is, it is very, very natural to think about uh, immutable events. And it's a fantastic abstraction. So in, uh, in databases, we have a table as abstraction. In Hadoop, we have a file. In Kafka, we have all together. <laughs> log, log, distributed, append only log, not this one, but the, the, the log. So the, the thing, the file, where you're writing in the end of the file, you're ringing from the beginning of the file. Um, and it's immutable. Remember, log4j, this is log. This is the things that, um, that happened. So this is how you capture things, right? Um, and you're not changing logs. You're not going there and changing log for your log4j unless you're trying to like, do something, you know, um, the word, what I was um, asking this morning, collusion. If you try to collude with something, right? Who said that? All right, so um, let's see a small, small demo. Let's, uh, so you got the idea, log is awesome. So we're going to be talking about Kafka. Kafka, Kafka is all our things. In, uh, in, uh, in this presentation, I will show you two demos. Um, because this demo happened to be written in uh, some cool technologies, I, I, I just simply cannot resist to, to show it. Uh, so it's called K-Lift. Lift, it's a very popular uh, ride sharing in uh, America. Um, and uh, this is app kind of sort of like a first step for me to uh, to build my startup on the ride sharing things and after that go to successful IPO. I will start with two microservices for now. Uh, rider and driver. So rider um, appears on the map and driver sees, okay, there's a rider who's calling for me so and I will go and pick him up. Simple piece of functionality. So the uh, they uh, communicate to each other, and uh, information is shared through the Kafka uh, using uh, some of the geolocation information, plus some of the um, some of the API that uh, is in a in a it's called the map map box uh, system. So, all right. So it's a different one. How we, um, how does it look like? Uh, is it good enough? What's the what's the font size? Okay, right. Um, any preferences, white or black? Black. We have developers here, right? So, what's your prefer pre preference as a as an architect, as a developer? Okay, that's a good one because developers love uh, like a black one thing. No, arguably, it's the the try to argue with developer over phone size, over the scheme of the uh, of the ID. It's like a fighting uh, with pig in the mud. You will notice after three hours, uh, the, the pig actually likes this. <laughs> so the same thing is what you do with, uh, you know, when you're trying to argue about the phones. All right. So this is app. And uh, one of the things that I want to show here is uh, also a very useful uh, developer tool uh, called um, Confluent CLI. So um, I will be using this for my local development. And for the next example, I will switch to the cloud. So the Confluent CLI, it's the, uh, the part of uh, Confluent platform. And uh, it has uh, two simple commands. Confluent, uh, I have uh, this uh, CNFL, it's my uh, alias, and start. It's out for blown Confluent platform, which is fully free and fully available for every developer to use any proprietary feature on their laptop uh, without any, any license. So one of the things that I like about the Confluent CLI, it allows me to have this um, reproducible environments, like I can throw away all the fast experiments because sometimes I start um, the, the one example, start the Kafka, do something with it, and after that shut down, and I'm forgetting that I have some data there. When I'm restarting next time, I try to figure out why my Kafka is, 
is, is behaving the way it behaves. Um, so this is why I say, oh, it's good that I can always wipe up and I don't need to go and manually do that. Um, and another thing is that I will show you in, a, in a just a moment is um, uh, different. Yeah. In a just a moment, uh, cube off. So my Kubernetes thing will not um, will not show up here. So all these components will start with on this one command. Start to keeper. Uh, the Confluence uh, Confluence CLI knows that you're doing uh, things with a full platform. It knows in what order needs to start. I will be using schema registry later. Uh, case SQL in control center. Now. My application is a uh, Spring Boot application. Uh, switch. My, my application is Spring Boot application. Um, how many of you guys are using Spring Boot? These days, Spring Boot is de facto standard, like back in the day, Java E, right? But only better because there's only one vendor. Uh, so you, it's actually like a standard that comes from one uh, vendor. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's much nicer. How many of you guys following with this uh, story with uh, Jakarta e and Oracle when the Oracle say, hey, you can use this stuff, but you cannot use JavaX uh, package and stuff like that. You need to now rename. And now standards that they were selling us, like standards, just standard API. JavaX, uh, the package is a standard API. Now you need to recompile your application, redo if you want to use this. So um, classic Oracle. All right. The um, Spring Boot application has a two components. So first of all, it starts with um, the uh, Kafka configuration. Let's see uh, Kafka configuration. As you can see here, it's not Java, but you still can read this, right? You still can read this. The cool thing about Kotlin, even though you don't know Kotlin, you can read this. It's a totally different story with Scala. <laughs> even you know Scala, you cannot read this. All right. Works every time. I love this. When, when I have the audience where my people there, works every time. So cool thing about the Spring Boot specifically, Spring Boot uh, has this uh, awesome component that's uh, called the Spring Kafka. It does all this uh, the Spring opinionated configurations, auto-discovery of certain beans. Works amazingly if you want to build uh, your application and adding your additional velocity as, uh, in developer productivity. It's, it's very great. So if you're, not, if you're building apps, uh, even then, you don't use Spring Boot. You can use a Kafka, um, a Spring Kafka to, to do uh, some, of the, some of your development. It's, it's really awesome. So in this particular case, Spring uh, follows this uh, um, notion of the templates. Every time when you need to write to some source, uh, some, some place, you need to create a um, template. In this case, it has a Kafka template. So the Kafka template, this is the things that will be injected in my, in my code, and I will be using to publish this message. So um, WebSocket Handler, this is where I actually will be doing stuff. So my WebSocket Handler will have a Kafka producer and Kafka uh, consumer, the, uh, supplier that will generate consumer, but it's the, just a matter of figure of speech. Um, and uh, properties. My Confluent platform started, so let me start my app. So. Um, this is my key for my map box topic. Probably I need to erase it after this presentation because, I don't know, like someone will take a picture and will reuse my map API. So to access this mapping API, you need to use the map box. So um, compilation-wise, um, everything goes uh, as usual. I use also boot command to, to start this application. Uh, Spring boot, uh, we, we, we're all good here. Um, and I will do my uh, writer app. Start with writer, and I will do driver. And uh, I will do those two side by side. I am a very uh, visual person, so that's why probably you won't see any console uh, except this like Gradle console thing. You won't see console consumer and producer. Uh, let me see, yeah, two things. This is my driver, right? So driver here is here. Uh, um, and uh, this is a page where I have my writer. So for example, I will place, let me put this in the same. Oop, it's here. Um, and uh, this is, I want to go to St. James Park. Oh, and my driver, on the driver screen, uh, my writer appeared. So now a writer, can actually go and pick up this guy. 
So now my two screens are now synchronized, and uh, my writer screen, on the writer screen, I can see what is going on and how this guy is actually moving. Hopefully, will be moving very soon. Uh, this is what happens with live demos. But anyway, so the thing is that I also want to show you here is a uh, control center that allows me to see and debug this problem. Again, this is totally free for uh, local development. For you can use it uh, even though it's uh, you know part of the Confluent platform. So um, I will go here and see there is a topic called uh, driver or rider. So I can go and uh, click inspect, and I should be potentially see some messages in this topic. So where is it? E -e -e. Should be inspect. So we will we'll see how it goes. Otherwise, we can always switch to. Um, it's moving. Yeah, it's moving. Something is going on. So uh, it's time to uh, check our log and everything is working correctly. So yeah, this it looks like it's working. Uh, something goes through the Kafka. So um, in this case, we have uh, two, two, uh, two screens. Writer uh, listens to WebSocket connection. Uh, all this uh, information about movement of driver. Let's, let's restart this. Usually restart helps a lot of this. So this is why, like I said, I, I like to have ability to, um, to restart things. And now I see there's some old artifact. Now, watch this. It's going to be another passenger here. And I need to go to this guy. Oop. Oop. OK. So hopefully they will start moving simultaneously. Always works from the second time. I think we have a huge success here. So uh, the cool thing about this app, it is available on GitHub. You already can go and try, try this out. Again, not a Scala. Um, it uses Kotlin, Spring Boot, and uh, WebSockets and stuff. Um, you can also build this app, and there's an uh, instruction how you can run this. Uh, and you can also build the Docker image and deploy this in Kubernetes. It's also something that's supported. I show this uh, today morning. So small app, two microservices, communicate through this event-driven uh, paradigm. Um, no request response, because WebSockets also support kind of streaming data. So just listen from this uh, socket over the, over the wire. Now, let's talk about a little bit more complex things. Said, yeah, it's, it's good, uh, it's interesting, let's, let's talk about some other stuff. Uh, how many of you heard about this website where the people trash in movies? Yeah. So, I think the Kafka Streams is a perfect framework for writing uh, a real-time rating application, movie rating application. And uh, in this case, um, uh, the, my colleague and my mentor, my boss, uh, my uh, the person who I look up to um, uh, wrote the the Hello World application that does like stream processing thing, and after that I took this and make it the beast. So he cannot now read this application and cannot use it for his demo. So um, sorry about that, Tim. All right. So now we have this microservice application, two services. One application is actually publishing ratings. It can be web app. I have a web app that pop, you know, emulates the click of user. And I have this like a fully streaming application that actually pumps this ratings, random ratings. So it emulates some of the you know, rating collusion thing um, that happens. And uh, my rating service, actually it's a Kafka, stream, uh, Kafka Streams app, listens to this topic and start doing some processing. First thing, I need to have uh, rating averages and uh, obviously count. Uh, so to get the uh, average ratings, I need to get a count and get a sum of rating. Super complex algorithm, right? You get the uh, sum divided by uh, number of ratings, you get average rating. Pretty much how the app that rates the talk is working. So in this case, you need to, uh, there's only one button. Uh, it, it looks like a five stars. So you need to click on this like a button that looks like a five stars. Like it needs to be, all needs to be read if you're gonna be going and rating the session. <clears throat> all right, so next thing is that um, I'm also lazy in dealing with the um, actual structure because structure might change. So I need to have a, a ability to evolve my schema. If I will add some new fields, some, some, uh, some, uh, some additional information about movies will be added. So I have a um, average schema stored in my schema registry. Uh, to get all this information. Plus, it gives me benefit of uh, having binary data in my Kafka, so I can save a little bit of um, 
uh, sell a little bit of on, 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 uh, on the storage expenses because a binary is always better. And plus, schema is extracted from your message and uh, uh, stored somewhere else, uh, in, in this case, the schema registry. So your binary would be uh, only contains the information that you actually need, right? Uh, so next thing is um, let's assume we have a legacy system that has list of the movies, right? We don't need to have this, uh, the constantly updated information about movies. Some of the movies, some of the awesome movies, uh, information about these movies, like uh, the Godfather movies, Godfather 2, uh, the Apocalypse, uh, about, uh, um, how do you pronounce it? Apocalypse Now and things like that. So these movies are awesome and the information about this movie is not changing. So you have this in, in database and you can also stream this from the legacy system into Kafka, into Keytable. Keytable will represent the state of this of these movies. So to get the ratings, I need to join movie and the, my uh, average ratings. So how I would do that, I will uh, have uh, another processor that will listen to this, uh, the key table, and also it will be materialized inside my application as a movie store. So, um, and the result of this uh, computation will be uh, populated into the rated movies topic, all right? Um, and I can have all my transactional boundaries inside my application. I don't need to deal with this, uh, the, um, some external system, so I have a full control of my app. I can scale this out, uh, scale this processing, and things like that. So, and it, the cool thing that at some point I want to also provide uh, access to this data of the, about these rated movies to outside world. So how I can do that? So I have uh, two options, essentially, right? Uh, but in general, just one. I will stream this back to Topic, and after use uh, Kafka Connect to um, to get this in some sort of external external system. It might be Elastic. It might be a system that allows you to do uh, any type of search. You can even dump it, have a connector that will uh, write this in some uh, remote REST service. So this is it. Um, let me show you quickly how this app is look like. Uh, let me stop this guy. And now I want to show you a how we can do how we can do this in cloud. Time we want time, we want time we perfectly. We have just uh, enough time to do another demo. Okay, passwords, passwords needs to be secured and stuff. It's a, it, I, I would usually joke that it goes into space and doing some things, but it doesn't go to space because this is local. And they 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 say this is going to be you know super fast and my okay. Thank you. Uh, do, 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 the wrong password, so I want to see my cluster. Uh, obviously, no. If security needs to be secure. Um, and uh, the good thing is that probably in other rooms, people are sleeping after lunch, you're not sleeping, so that's why the Wi-Fi is performing just exactly right. So people not sitting here in uh, in. Uh, Doing some Wi-Fi. So this is um, this is my cluster where all this uh, movie information is deployed, and uh, it looks like a control center that I just showed. Uh, some of the data is is already here, so it will help me with the population of the local state. So actually, this is uh, this is the, another project that I provided you a link, and this is the beast of the projects, right? So it has uh, some core core data which will have only my average schemas because, like I said, i lazy. I just want to generate my Java out of the schema. So all the schema information is placed here that describes my movie. It describes my rating. So all the schema that will represent the rating data. Rating movie. So it's, everything is here. So this is a core project. So during the build of this project, I will generate jars because, you know, I'm lazy, but my app needs to use jars, right? And um, let's... Uh, Let's look to uh, to this particular thing. Um, so first of all, I want to show you another cool thing. If you don't, uh, if you're not using this in your um, in your uh, Kafka Streams development, you are actually missing big time. So in this particular case, uh, I will probably use this one. This is a uh, this is just simple. Uh, so simple Kafka Streams application, but uh, one of the things that I want to show that uh, performing with localhost, I don't want to perform on the localhost. So in this case, what I do, say NFL, stop, and uh, in my application, I will switch to, uh, to cloud. 
So I will go here and um, select uh, configuration. And in this case, I will just use my cloud config. I will not show my cloud config because there's a like secrets and stuff, uh, like uh, keys and stuff. So my app will be connecting to the cloud. Uh, Schema registry also deployed into cloud, so I don't need to worry about this one. But the cool thing that um, you will probably see here, first of all, I have this typology printed, but check this out. If I will click this link, I actually will have pretty cool thing. So this is full description of my application, full description of topology of my application. So in this case, I can actually describe what am I, am I doing. Every time where you don't know what you're doing with Kafka Streams or you're not sure what you're doing right thing, use this tool. It's called the Kafka Streams Topology Visualizer. It uh, takes the out in output of this topology.describe.toString method and draws this in this very nice, uh, nice fashion. Um, so in this particular case, you see I have a two subtopology that will list two topics. One topic is um, the raw ratings that re uh, reads information about ratings, and uh, another thing is raw movies, uh, reads information about movies. After that, after I did uh, all this uh, like a parsing, I read this uh, movie information, parse this, and um, I'll go over to the one topology where I merge this, and as a result here. I have a two things. So first thing is that the movie store will have a, my embedded database that I will expose to outside world. So um, let me generate some of the <coughs> uh, see clouds and populate some of the uh, movies into the cloud infrastructure. So my movies will be uh, available there. And uh, just um, let's generate some of the ratings also into the cloud. Uh, where is it? Ratings. And my ratings is over here. Just want to see if uh, my application is actually working. Something should be output here. Application is actually working. Uh, another way how I can check this is using, uh, again, uh, Confluent Cloud tool to get uh, access to this data. And the cool thing about this, it actually can do, uh, nope, not, not application reset, nope, nope, no. Uh, consume. Um, the, the Confluent CLI comes with the couple useful commands. You don't need to go, if you've been in the Stefan's talk previously when he was talking different tools and like you don't know like what's the, uh, what's the difference between the bootstrap server and bootstrap endpoint and uh, some other bootstrap servers and something other things. Um, the Confluent uh, CLI provides you a, a the consistent uh, experience of dealing with things. If you want to consume from the topic, this is how you're doing this. If you want to consume from the cloud topic, just need to specify minus minus cloud. So this is, uh, so what it does, it will go to cloud scheme registry, will read this uh, information about movies and uh, print out some of the information uh, about these movies. So this is how we typically do, right? So this is how we typically do it. Because it's in the topic, everyone can, uh, can access this data. It's cool. Uh, ratings are populated. And uh, so do we see any, uh, any good movies here? Uh, Dumb and Dumber. But I think it's, uh, yeah, Dumb and Dumber. It's amazing movies. A lot of uh, things in my life I learned from these movies. That Aspen is not in California. If you've seen Dumb and Dumber, you probably remember this, uh, this quote. Godfather. Okay. So we have this, like, app is working, like, everything is, is, is working, and everything is cool. Now, um, let me actually now show you something, uh, something interesting. Um, I will go to my run dashboard and run my Spring Boot. I, again, Spring Boot is awesome. Uh, use, I use this in this application. And what, uh, the, one of the reasons that I want to use Spring Boot is to use um, this uh, REST controller. I want to expose the state of my application, state the movie store and the uh, rated store as a REST endpoint. So in this case, I will using the Spring Boot REST capabilities. I will inject this uh, so-called um, metadata service that will query my application state and expose this to outside world. The one of the things that, um, let me run this.
All right, all right, all right. Okay, so it will start consuming. And let me see if I can do HTTP if it's up and running. So uh, this is, uh, the, I provided access to my application state through the rest endpoint. So sometimes w if, if, you don't need, if you don't have a time to, uh, you know, go and query your topic on, or whatnot, so you can provide these capabilities with um, uh, um, um, the inter interactive queries. So essentially, essentially, the final, final few slides. Um, you, will, you will look in the code. So we have uh, the, the, the applications or like systems uh, or different levels of abstractions that we have have layers. Also, orgs have layers. Um, but essentially, the database is our place where we used to dealing with this. You know, when everything was fine, everything's cool, we, we put everything in our database, right? Um, but essentially, if we would try to peel it out, we will we, we'll deal with SQL. Uh, SQL is was this our API layer that we use to query the stuff, um, uh, and uh, the SQL allows us to get access to this uh, underlying tabular model that was described in the relational math and stuff, right? Um, but at the very big, at the very end of this database, under all these kind of things, there's storage engine that based on commit log, transaction log. Right, so you you already de de uh, the was doing this in the past dealing with the log, but now with this uh, uh, the concept that I described, you putting a log into center and become log, log becomes your uh, your 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 center a source of truth of the data. So in this case, you're not just writing microservices; you build a database out uh, inside out. So your application becomes a a state you you building state out of this log in your application, and actually it's a good thing. Thank you so much for your time, and I'm always available for advanced interrogation. If you have any questions, code already there. Um, you can grab it. You can grab me anytime. And thank you so much for being awesome and uh, stayed here awake for this 40 minutes. It was amazing.